All right, so movie review. Pacific Rim and Pacific Rim Uprising. 2013 and 2018. So, I watched both of these because, you know, I was feeling the urge to watch them. So, as you can see, the first one's got double black discs. And the sequel has the blue text clear disc. So, yeah. So, which of these is the better one? The first one, obviously. So, special features on this one. You get 14 featurettes that give you all that good shit. And the director's notebook. Oh, yes. That. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is truly a beautiful thing. What is the director's notebook exactly? Well, if you watch the film and... If you also have, let me see if I can break it up. There we go. If you have this book, his notebook in this, I'll do a review on this this week. Um, a lot of the stuff in that book is in Spanish. Yeah, his notebook is in Spanish. So it's translated to English for you to understand. It's really fucking cool. English and Japanese, that's right. No, Spanish and Japanese. That's what I meant. So, <clears throat> Pacific Rim, if you've never seen this, it is about kaiju attacking from the Pacific, from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Aliens called the Precursors have decided to invade our world and take it over for their own liking. Build big ass bots called Jaegers to fight them back. Of course, it doesn't last very long, but it's a hell of a fight. Um, I love the shit out of this. This is a god tier 11 out of 10 for me, easily. Because with Guillermo, with Del Toro, whenever he's at the helm of the film, you get a solid story. You get hella amazing mythos. You get underlying story so you have tons of subplots going on and you get deeper looks at what's going on within the environment itself and the story and i love that a lot and this has a stellar cast too and you know i really enjoy the shit out of this i'm actually gonna buy this eventually i really will because <clears throat> I forgot how good this film was. And one of the things I watched in the director's notebook was that... Or no, not the director's notebook. Well, part of it, I watched a thing about the uh, black market. What were they doing? Oh, the kaiju harvesting. Yeah, where they were cutting the corpses up and shit and selling their parts off. That was cool. And then I also read in the making of the book... The team went through rigorous training to, you know, work the con pods and stuff. And it was amazing. I really liked it. So, yeah, that's phenomenal. That's good shit. And then we got the sequel. So, Uprising takes place a decade after the events of the first film. Um, this has couple bonus features i think there's about uh i want to say 10 featurettes and deleted scenes deleted scenes are about um oh both of them have deleted scenes actually this one has four minutes of deleted scenes i think this one's got six minutes 57 seconds of deleted scenes they sort of help the film, but this one's shorter. This one's longer. Um, it is super fun and explosively entertaining. It's directed by Stephen DeKnight. Um, but it's not as good as the sequel. Like, this is a 5, 5 to 6, 5 out of 10. Easily. It... It does, like, it does follow, but it's more, 
it's more fight oriented than it is building up building on to the mythos that's my beef with it like it builds more on the mythos rather than oh no not yeah it doesn't build on the mythos it just makes it a monster fight film basically that's all it is that's all it does it's um i do like what did i like there's a lot I liked about it, but at the same time, it's just, it's not as exciting and harrowing as the first one was. That's the difference between the two of them. Like, they're both good, but this one is way better. Like, if they had gone with more backstory building on, you know, what happened over the past decade, that would have helped a lot. Um, what else? I don't think Steven did a bad job bringing this together. I really don't. But there wasn't a lot of, you know, backstory to this. That's what, that's what really kicked it down for me. I still enjoyed the shit out of it. The Mega Kaiju was awesome. I liked, um, Charlie Day as the villain. That was cool. Um... I know people were pissed about Mako being killed in a helicopter crash. I remember that. Um, that didn't really bother me. No, nah, that didn't bother me that much. It was the story. The story is solid, but lacks a lot. And, yeah, it really does kind of make you not like it. But at the same, if you're a nitpicky person... And I know a lot of nitpicky motherfuckers. I see them every goddamn day. <laughs> oh, man. I see people nitpick the shit out of everything. I do it, too, but not to the point of like, oh, yeah. We can't have no Negroes in this film. We can't have a female lead. That's SJW and woke. And we can't have him because he's too much of a pretty boy. Yeah, I'm not like that. Fuck that. I'm just like, that's cool. She's good. He's okay. That's my point of view on it. But yeah. <laughs> you know how people are. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know. It's just. It's so fucking strange. Like. I thought they would. I don't know. I'm trying to think how to word this shit. If this had more story build up with it. It would have been. An e a good solid eight out of ten, but since it doesn't have a lot of background to it, it's a five five six five out of ten. So yeah, but the whole Pacific Rim universe though, like I I'm invested in this universe. I really am. Like you have, I gotta read. Um, there's. A comic that takes place... There's the comic that takes place in Year Zero. Called Tales from Year Zero. Which is, you know, the debut of the fight and all that. Then there's this. Then in between there's Aftermath. Written by, uh... Kevin Scott. Excellent fucking story. It's a great bridge between these two. Uh, plus you get to see Hannibal return. I already did a review on that shit. Then you have Uprising... It's okay. And then you have Pacific Rim, the black. I like the black. That's really good. That's some good shit. Even though it's in its first season, it's still good. And it's a short season, but still pretty damn good. And I'm hoping they keep building up on that. And I actually tagged Steven and Kavan in a tweet about the black. And I noticed in Uprising, with the art book on it, there were a lot of unused Jaeger concepts and Kaiju concepts. And I said, you know, you could repurpose them for the black. That way they get used and not left behind. Both of them like the tweet. So I'm like, okay, maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't. Who knows? I was also thinking, you know, they could make a Pacific Rim video game, too. It'd be a strict two-player setup, which would be a lot of fun. 
Or you could have, you know, if you don't want to play with anybody, you can do, you know, you and the AI. But, I don't know, it would get boring after a while. But it would be fun. So, out of both these movies, that's my favorite. I would totally recommend these both to you. You know, try them out if you've never seen Guillermo del Toro's body of work. Definitely watch these. If you've never seen Stephen Tonight's body of work, check him out as well. If you don't like the casting, the setup, the premise, eh, you won't enjoy these. I would also highly recommend getting the art and making of both these films, those books, because they really do complement it. I would also recommend getting into the comics and the Netflix adaptation as well. And hell, if you really want to be a completionist, buy the toys. Because <laughs> they're cool as fuck. But I won't get any of those because they don't really appeal to me. So, <clears throat> if you aren't into robot fights, monsters, kaiju, any of that shit, you won't enjoy any of this shit. However, if you are a diehard fan of that, you will definitely have a ball watching this. If you're against Warner Brothers because of your own personal politics and whatever bullshit, you won't be able to watch these at all, I'm sorry. Because it conflicts with your politics. That's on you, that's your fault. Um, if you don't like a black lead... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so damn funny. If you don't like a black lead, a female lead, and Clint Eastwood's boy, you won't enjoy this sequel. Um, if you don't like uh, UK stars, Asian stars, who else was in these films? Peach folk and other motherfuckers, you won't enjoy this at all because you have racial issues. So, yeah. But if you happen to enjoy everything I just named off, these this is your alley and cup of tea. So, do I want a third film? Yes and no. Yes, it would be cool to see that. Why would it be cool? It would be cool to see. There are uh, there were Jaegers in the Aftermath comic. And there's also the unused stuff too. You could repurpose all that shit and bring it back. And boom, you got a third. Of course, it would take a couple years to make. Because you gotta see how Pacific Rim the Black goes. How many seasons is that gonna last for? Me, I'm hoping at least three at least three. And then once that's over and during that time, um, maybe, you know, they could work on making the third film up, but it'd be hard to do because there isn't really much to do with a third film. Unless you have a giant fight again where, you know, humanity gets wiped the fuck out. Then it would be a nice dark ending and like perfect. And people would bitch and moan about that. It's too dark. I'm like, the first fucking film was dark as hell. And the second film was sort of dark, but not too dark. <laughs> but, oh, that's one. So, I don't know. But, you know, it's a great universe to get into. I like it. It's really fun. So... Yeah, I will be getting this. I'm going to hunt around and see which one I want to get. Because I know there's a Steelbook set that I think I really liked. But I'm not sure. I'll have to relook. I'll have to check it again. Um, but yeah. So, huh. That's what I got. That's how I feel. <laughs> so, until next time. Like and subscribe for thoughts and prayers.